A good Wednesday afternoon, everyone. We are so glad you're with us today for our final software update webinar for 2020. Can you believe it? And with so many new goodies today in Student Manager and ASWEB, I'm not going to take too much time away from the demonstration, and I'm going to have Matthew get us started. If you have questions or comments along the way, drop those in the chat box. We're taking a look at those. So, Matthew, tell us what's new in the last three months. Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, quite a few things have changed, and and some some enhancements. So, uh, one of the first things I want to talk about is Edge. Uh, we we noticed that with some of the Edge updates, that uh, um, Edge wasn't working quite right from some links in Student Manager, and, and in particular is when you were trying to process a payment in Student Manager or click on the, uh, the uh, URL in the ACE Web Info tab of your course screen. Those, uh, just with the parameters with it, it, it wasn't going right. Uh, so I had to revamp it, rework it. Um, so in it was 90 when we released the changes with Edge. Um, if you're experiencing issues with the process payment, you will need to get a new gateout.fxp from your technician in order for Edge to work right in processing payments. And um, we've also, um, gateout.ini has been, I guess, kind of um, optional to this point. But with Edge in in um, this new mode and stuff, it, we were finding that gateout.ini is required now. So, uh, um, so that uh, those are the couple little caveats with it working going forward. But uh, uh, we are we are moving forward with it. Uh, if you prefer to use Edge, uh, I know Chrome and uh, Firefox, Opera, Safari, those have been uh, uh, stable for quite a while now. It's just with Microsoft introducing all these changes with Edge, and and uh, that's where things were becoming unstable. So uh, F4 screen, uh, for those of you that haven't seen it uh, yet, that is the new registration find screen. I think we did a webinar on it not too long ago. We sure um, did. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's been just a few enhancements with it. Uh, when you do a find, uh, I've changed some of the double-click behavior. If you double-click on the student ID or the name, it's you know the name of the student, you get to the name screen. Double-clicking on a course code gets you to the registration screen and double click on the course name actually goes to the course screen. Uh, before you could only get to the registration screen from the find, uh, so now this kind of gives you different different modes as as uh, far as what you uh, want to get to uh, from that screen. So more fun. Uh, new thing happening uh, because quite a few of you guys have had to change your courses to online. Uh, we heard you loud and clear as far as removing the begin date and end date automatically. Um, so it's actually a question that comes up. So change a course from open to online. It'll pop up with the question you see here in the middle. Um, would you like to clear them out? If you say yes, then the end date and uh, begin date both get cleared. So help help you out a little bit there. Um, another little enhancement with the F2 filter in that um, uh, you can now see that filter in an, an additional place, and that's going to be in your preferences on the course tab. Uh, this will also help those of you that administrate administer the software and you're wanting to see um, you know other people are getting different experiences when they do a course lookup 
well, you want to go look at their filter and see what their filter is set to as to why they're getting unexpected behavior. You can go to the password maintenance, edit preferences on that person, and then go to the course tab and you can see what their filter is set to. So helps helps a couple things out there. Parent course, um, this has been asked for for quite a while, uh, especially from Greenville. Uh, they wanted to have when you put in a grade on a parent course, you know, in a package, that it gets filtered down to all the children courses, um, right, you know, right when the, you you enter it. So that's uh, now a preference on your uh, register screen. Another preference uh, I've put together for um, those of you that are are um, using like online and membership uh, type courses and you're putting in a begin date and end date, well, the end date calculation goes through and, and will skip over all your holidays, which you may not want on these particular type of courses. Um, so, and plus, you're creating then 365 room use records for this course that you probably don't really need. So, this option prevents uh, room use from being created on just these course types. Um, so, and some of that's a little bit of speed issue as well when creating these type of courses. Uh, especially on the slower network, but those of you that have like you know online courses where they can take it in the next five years, you're you're going to have a lot of sessions or something, you know, something like that. Uh, you don't have to sit around and wait for the the room use to be created for all those sessions. So bad check. So this is the scenario where you've been given a check, you've cashed it or, you know, deposited it uh, with the bank, and then it comes back from the bank as, hey, it's a bad check. So you need to go void the check in Student Manager and assess a a uh, bad check fee. You know, get, get back the money that you've been assessed from the bank. Um, so this is a new button on the pay screen over on the right side, only for check payments and it's called bad check. And you hit it, it automatically voids the payment. And if you've got in your preferences on the pay tab, the bad check fee name and fee amount, it assesses that fee to the registration as a as a um, an extra charge. So that way you can then collect from the student not only the uh, uh, registration again, but now a bad check be for for giving uh, a bad amount so hopefully that'll help you speed along and in, in get processed export to file um, people were having troubles especially on some of the cursors where there's a ton of fields being able to find the right fields that they were wanting to export so there's now a preference on the system tab um, you know, I've got it highlighted there, sort, export to file fields in alpha order. And that way you can have, you know, co-accounts at the top, active, just under, all that stuff. You see the the uh, ordering there on the right, um, a little bit of the ordering anyway, because that's the deadbeat cursor that goes on quite a while. Uh, there's well over 200 fields in the deadbeat cursor. So this this should help you find those fields a little faster uh, and get get through those. If if you want to see it, um, definitely if you're used to the way it's natural or you know where natural order, which is the order that has been in there for um, umpteen million years, um, then you'll be fine because then due and paid is clear at the end. So you always know that. And, things like that but um, yeah it just depends on how you're using it how, what you're used to uh, I think definitely newer users will find this this more usable more user-friendly than than having it in the natural order 
uh, XML. I was doing the uh, uh, webinar last month on exporting, and I realized I, there was a different, there was another way I could help people, especially with importing into third-party applications, and that was to get the XML export working in the export to file and copy to XLS functions. So that is done, um, or it, it's actually been released now. Um, I was working on it back when I gave the webinar, but, but now it's actually done and released as of Monday. So you can now go grab those tools if you are needing to do it. Uh, one thing about XML, like the XLSX uh, format, is that you can export memo fields. So that's the big thing with that. Um, so some of your catalog um, catalog exports, if your third party, um, you know, the printing um, press can accept XML, then this is going to work out perfect for uh, uh, linking up with them and getting getting the courses printed and published in in that uh, software. So. Hopefully some of you can use this. If not, it's just laying there in the system in case you ever do. Uh, membership retention report. Uh, this now has an XLSX option for the for that export. The big thing with that is it allows that listing of all the different memberships uh, to be shown because there was carriage returns in that field uh, that wasn't able to export into regular Excel or even the DBF uh, needed to be in XLSX format in order to be able to, to see that. So um, that's now available for you. Uh, Deadbeat, this is in particular with the turbo mode, which is another preference. Um, and that what turbo mode does is make, instead of 200, uh, fields in that cursor, it shortens it down to like 75 or 100. It's it's quite a bit. It's supposed to be faster in in pulling it up, um, but definitely a, a a thinner, skinnier model. Well, we've made it a little fatter because we uh, added course hours and course CEUs to that list because uh, you guys were missing it from that mode. So that's now been added. Mass receipt and print receipt, we figured out that those two areas have completely different fields in their cursors. So if you were expecting like to, to move a receipt from the print receipt area over into your mass receipt, it might not necessarily work. Um, so yeah, but the big deal was mass receipt was lacking a whole bunch of fields that were in print receipt. So I've been I've gotten to where I can um, get them to to match at least for now. Um, I've gotten them to match. Added into mass receipt uh, things like the C O D O W, C O S E S S. So your sessions D O W is the days of the week. Um, Tons of names fields were missing, so those all have been added. I think now every single names uh, field is available in the, the mass receipt area. So uh, that should help you guys out a ton in in uh, in running your receipts and being able to modify those and and getting them how you need to without using all these functions instead. I mean, you you could have gotten these fields. With, with functions, but uh, those functions do slow down your report if you're adding a ton of those. So so getting these two areas to match is, is very good as far as being able to avoid that Matthew, slowdown. Matthew, yeah. Matthew. Uh, so the big point on this would be that now reports would be interchangeable between the print receipt and mass receipt if you have a template you like in yep. the... Okay, and for those of you users out there, that idea of being able to just uh, move using the report move tool, a report, a receipt you like in one of these areas to the other should be pretty much straight up now. So, all right, thanks, Matthew. Yep, yeah, before you would have to modify to, 
to get them working if you were using some of these fields. But um, but yeah, not anymore. InstConf. This is I actually uh, did a uh, newsletter article last month on it. Um, really, it, it's a new function to list all the courses that an instructor has that overlap a different course. Um, so, so you can see, you know, instructors can't be in two places at one time. So this allows you to see when that happens. I mean, when you, you put an instructor on a course, um, it will tell you that, hey, this instructor already has uh, a course at that time. And you're like, okay, I'll fix that later. But then you never get back to fixing it. This now gives you a report of doing that. And I've actually, in, in my newsletter article, which you can access from the website, uh, I've gotten that report uh, in, a, in a link. So you can, uh, you can download the report, import it into your system, and start using it right away. You don't have to go add InstConf to uh, a uh, report yourself. But if you want to, you can, you can use this function. Uh, to do that, but uh, but yeah, this should help you then just keep straight, you know, all your different instructors, make sure they're not in two places at one time. Refund wizard and the cancel course, uh, uh, so this ma the mask cancel, really. Uh, these two areas, there's nothing visually different, but what I've done is is ripped apart the code and rewritten it uh, in these areas because I found there was a ton of inconsistencies. Um, not only will it help me in debugging that those code areas in, in the future, but having the, uh, the consistency in both places is going to help you guys so that you're not getting unexpected things, uh, when you're trying to cancel a course. Um, um, one of the things was uh, the billings associated with with the registration. Uh, it was not um, it was not voiding them in both cases. So there there were times where your invoices were becoming um, um, you know you, on the aging report, the billing would still show up on the aging report. Instead of you know it's been a canceled uh, registration, so you wouldn't want to see it on an aging report. So, um, so those kind of consistencies have been fixed. Uh, there were a few bugs in that area as well that I fixed at the same time. So, um, yeah, much much nicer and cleaner. So you can hopefully avoid a lot of issues with it uh, now. Mass email certificates, invoices, and faculty contracts. The, the new thing is if you've got the wait X seconds between every however many messages set in the mass email area and the class email area, uh, that's, those settings are now respected in, in these, these areas. Uh, you don't have an actual chance to change it when you're running these. It's just remembered off of your previous setting in the mass email area or, or class mail area, um, which I mean, you probably you all have probably said it and forgot about it a long time ago, so you probably don't need to reset it uh, at this point. But uh, but anyway, just kind of uh, note there that you don't have a chance to change it. It's just it's just going to do it. Uh, another thing with emailing is the quick email to class. If you want to copy the proxy person uh, on on whatever notification you're sending to the class, there is now an option down at the bottom to to do just that. So it will grab in anybody that is a proxy <coughs> person and uh, also send them a copy of the email. Also with uh, emailing, mass email, uh, the carbon copy up at the top, that sends 
every single person in the cursor or you know every single recipient of the email you're going to get a copy of that or whoever is in that cc box they're going to get a copy of that some of you don't necessarily want that you just want one copy so down at the bottom is a new option also send a single copy to the following persons and that way you just get one copy um, I can see you know some of those you want to get a copy of every single one because it is an important email you know like the um, um, oh, I don't know you're sending out mass um, uh, I don't know reminders or, or things like that um, you want to make sure you've got a, a copy of that uh, for your own records that way when they call in and say hey I never got this you can go look in your your uh, email box and see yeah I sent it so you should have gotten it mass clone so a couple new things here uh, first option, first thing is right on the uh, the screen itself. The mass clone screen is on the uh, filter up at, up at the top. Is there's an exclude canceled box. Uh, so that's the previous courses. Any of them that were previously canceled, you're not uh, cloning over for the new semester, since they're probably gonna, you know, probably not gonna make it the next semester either, or something like that. Or, you know, you want to wait. Um, a few semesters before trying that that course again or something uh, you can do that also to help you make the decisions uh, when you get to the, uh, um, the the preview screen I've added previous canceled previous enrolled and minimum those three right columns there um, so that you can see at a glance you know the numbers from previous semesters you know low enrollment um, probably not going to make it again this semester um, whereas your your you know definitely the ones that have made at least the minimum you're definitely wanting to offer again so hopefully this helps you in the decision making with the mass clone uh, option uh, in the system so you're not uh, fighting or you know, running a report beforehand of of you know the numbers, and then going off the report and and the screen when you're uh, getting to the preview as far as making your unchecking choices and and make sure you're checking the right ones. So help you guys out there. Uh, we've we introduced the uh, publish date. Um, few months ago I think now I think that was the June release um, so this is the um, uh, published date for the course and now we've added it to the mass change update delete archive area uh, so that you can set those in mass if you want to uh, student callbacks really the only thing different here is that the uh, comments on the callbacks uh, you, it's now listed on the printout. Courses taught. Uh, what I've done is made it so that when you click on the header row, it resorts the data by that that column. Uh, so if you want to see things in begin date order, or if you want to see it in course number order, uh, you can you can click the different uh, headings to sort there. Unintended bonus is that this also works on your student list, wait list, and courses taken. Uh, it just looks a little funky because all those areas have the total row at the bottom. or Well, it, it should be at the bottom. When you resort, it kind of bubbles up into the, the uh, stuff. And usually it's up at the top, but not necessarily. So... F2 enrollment report uh, used to be the the, d, the days of the week were in a drop down, so I've now put those into check boxes uh, for you to check. And this is and joined, so if you want um, to see which courses run on both Sunday and Saturday, check mark both, and it will only show you courses that run 
on Saturday and Sunday. It can run other days of the week as well, but uh, definitely run Saturday and Sunday. So um, that should help some of you. Change the firm on the name. So that we've had this preference uh, save as home address uh, in the in the in there forever. Uh, what's different is when you change the firm, uh, it wouldn't update the address. So I've now added a prompt that when you change the firm name and there is an address already in there, and it's different than than the new firm. It asks if you want to overwrite that address. So uh, that can be automatic for you, and you're not copying and pasting then uh, from the firm screen over into the name screen manually. Uh, that's the big deal there. Now, Matthew, can I jump in if you jump back to sure. that? I wanted to clarify this. Uh, if you change a firm address through the firm screen, uh, this has always been the case. So this is... Um, that if you change the firm address on the firm record, it will ask you if you want to update firm address on all of the name records where the firm address was the old firm address. So it does automatically update where you've always kept it consistent. This new option is one that if you've got, for instance, imported data or migrated data and you want to synchronize to the firm's address, it gives you a option to automatically do that. So it, it's just one more additional automatic update. So, all right. Or, or, or uh, a, a person has left Aceware Systems and now they work at Ace Hardware, you yeah. can then change okay. their firm. Good point, good point. <laughs> Not that any of us will do that. Never, but never, never. Anyway, of course, uh, the wait list. The new thing on here is the firm field now shows up way off to the right. But again, you can reorder these and it will remember the order. So if you want to see firm closer to the beginning, uh, you can change that. But uh, anyway, new thing, listing that firm uh, in addition to the other information should help some of you. Uh, also with firm, on the lookup screen, some of you guys have way too long of firm names. Not your fault, but... Uh, yeah, so I've widened that field out uh, quite a bit. Um, well, I think an extra 100 pixels or something like that. But anyway, widened that field and then added the state because some of you were um, getting confused as to whether that was Manhattan, Kansas or Manhattan, New York. So, yeah, so that's been added for you guys uh, to be able to see that as well. Outstanding invoice lookup. We've had that old, ugly-looking screen for, I don't know, ages. Now, 1992, I think, is when I saw that the, um, the, the that screen is from. So anyway, we've had this newer lookup screen since, what, 2014 is when I made this. Um, but we hadn't applied it to the invoice lookup. So switched over the screen, which was a lot of work actually getting this to work with invoices. Um, it and really the big problem was the due and paid. Getting those uh, got those to work in the new screen, and now you can s search using the more modern screen uh, to get to to your um, invoices or your your payers or which whatever you're trying to look up, uh, be able to find find those invoices. Hopefully a lot easier, a lot better, make you more efficient. Registration mode uh, gets kind of confusing sometimes, especially if you leave the registration screen open and you go to lunch or something and then come back and you're like, oh, what was I doing? Well, to kind of give you a little visual hint, if you're coming to the registration screen from the course, then the, the course information is going to highlight in yellow. If you're coming at the registration from the name screen or from find regist registration, and you're looking up a name at that point, then it gets you that uh, the blue background on the, the name. So just kind of a visual clue 
to help you out there. And it's going to help in this next thing I'm going to show. We've added, or I've added, a sort onto the arrows on on the registration screen. So that way you can put it in, like, if, so from, from the name screen, you have the option of having an add date order, which is the current order, number, or that's um, course number, course title, or course begin date order. All those options are available. Uh, from the course screen, being able to come in here, the order of the arrows are determined either by add date, last name of the student, last name, first name of the student, so particularly helpful if you've got a lot of parents and kids in courses, uh, or just siblings in general in courses, um, or husband and wife taking a course. Uh, SSN ID is also a choice in sort order, or you can order by firm. Uh, so hopefully this will help get you guys to where you need to be faster. Um, I don't know. I've always liked it in add date order, but I guess I'm the only one. Uh, so hopefully these other orders will uh, help you guys uh, enable in in being able to navigate the the registrations. Matthew. Yes. Is is that a like course where you have to change it every time, or does it like name where you can set a default sort on the register? It remembers between it, times. It, it does. So if you pick yeah. a firm order and close and get out of manager and actually log back in tomorrow under your username, it'll remember firm. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Super. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And 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 just realize these are two different sort orders. So you do have to set if you're accessing it the two different ways, then you will need to set it twice. But then after that, it's you're done. It'll remember after that point. Um, but and I guess the part of the reason why it was add date order to begin with was it didn't matter either way you access it because add date was consistent in both areas. Whereas, you know, in the in from the name record, you know, you've got the different courses, they're all one name. And from the course, it's all one course, it's just the different names in in the registration. So um yeah, that kinda got a little sticky, but hey, I got it done. So two different sort orders there for you guys to use. Member rate. This is a couple of different changes with the member rate. Um when you mass register uh, people into a new course, it now automatically will give the member rate to members. So you don't uh, have to go back through and fix um, fix people after you do a mass register, um, assuming the course that they're getting put into does have a member rate on it. But uh, anyway. Uh, also, with moving a person off the wait list, and they now either either now they get the member rate, or they had were supposed to get the member rate when they originally registered, but you know the system didn't didn't do it at that point. But it does double check then when you move them off the wait list as to if they do qualify for the member rate, it's automatically going to give that person that member rate. It's a little more automatic keep you from having to fix things down the road and and give your members um all right i think i'm done with my stuff go out there and update guys uh any questions matthew a question from Brittany on the preference for the timeout uh on emailing the mass emailing that is a variable that is remembered, or do you have to set that every time you go to do a mass mail? That, that's remembered. That is remembered. Very good. So <laughs> if you set your time out of eight seconds, it'll it'll remember it the next time you go back in. Right, yeah. And that's Super. been like that forever. So. Gotcha. 
Um, the only uh, quick note before you turn it over, Sharon, I want to give a shout out to Lee College. We have six people enrolled from Lee today. So again, I want to say that is the largest number from one school that we've had in a while. So shout out to Lee for uh, jumping in there and keeping up to date. Um, keep it up. So there's your bar, guys. Get the rest of your team to sign in. Anybody can come in and attend these. So Sharon? Sharon? Yep. And Jason, I'm going to be handing things to you. And as I do, I'll remind you that, you know, if the today's date didn't work, it is being recorded. And so your team can always jump on and take a look at those at the webinar on demand. Or if you need to revisit some things, that'll work too. And I noticed Sharon, that Lewis Sharon. and Clark also has five <laughs> registered, so don't leave them out. Sarah's saying, hey, wait, right. wait, well, we've got... <laughs> <laughs> and again, I, 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 I was counting noses, and I forget that a lot of you do this in a team mode, and so you might have a whole bunch of people <laughs> in one room. So again, Sarah, my bad. Uh, congrats to, to Lewis and Clark as well for having a good crowd. So, All right, Jason, we're all we're all yours. And Stein and Cheryl, I think, are on. So we may hear from one or more. Got the whole Ace Web crew. Well, thank you very much. Um, so we're going to talk about some of the the cool new stuff that is going into Ace Web Build 61 that is right on the precipice of being released. Uh, still have a little bit of testing left to do on the SQL and Fox Pro versions, but uh, we're, we're chugging through those and hopefully should be out within short order. So in no particular order, here's some of the, the neat things that we've been working on. Uh, the first one is a customizable instructor password reset email. So what this basically means is we've had the ability to customize what the public password is for your instructors to use. So if they have a blank instructor password, they've never logged into their instructor access on AceWeb, or let's say you reset their password from student manager, if they click that forgot the password link, then this allows you to customize what actually comes in the email. Prior to this, it had the default uh, public password that is the initials and zip code, which obviously if you change that using the config section of your instructor template, then that doesn't apply. So we now have the ability for you to plug in whatever uh, message that you want there in that email. For instance, if you're using static passwords instead of a uh, combination of initials and zip code or something like that, you can actually customize that email that they receive. Along with that, and just as an example, um, this is the email that I'm talking about. So the one the instructor receives when they click that link uh, to reset their password. Along with that, you, we've added an option in the phrase book. So if you're not familiar with that, um, let's go to the admin page here. The phrase book or the custom text options from your AceWeb admin allows you to change some of the hard-coded uh, phrases that you see on AceWeb. So this is really handy if there's some particular word or phrase that you want to just adjust uh, globally, um, you can do that here through the through the phrase book. And so the one that we've added is in the lookup section, and it's this uh, description of the instructor default password. So this is the message that appears on the actual page um, when they get their password reset email and click that. Instead of having the default initials and zip code, you can customize this message again to whatever you like. Okay, next up is the feature that allows membership courses to automatically recalculate your enrollment cart total when you add a membership course that provides a discount to certain courses. So let's go through some options here and see if we can find these. I'm gonna log off of the tech account. And so let's say uh, we're going through courses and we're going to look at some Ollie courses here. Just add a few to my cart. Now note, um, <clears throat> I'm not signed in. So the first thing it's going to ask us to do is sign in. Oh, <laughs> I guess it helps when I have my actual 
correct password here. There we go. Okay, so I'm enrolling in this, uh, what was it, art appreciation class, and it's got a $250 registration fee. So let's save that onto the cart. Let's keep going. Go back into our Ollie membership and under financial management, um, financial success in this new economy. So note, if we go to the fees tab here, we can see the regular fee that I'm going to be assessed because it knows that I'm not a member. Um, it detects that I'm signed in and I don't have this membership. And so you get that message here that says, here's how much you can save if you were a member. But let's just pretend for the moment that uh, whoever is doing this doesn't read that or doesn't care and they go ahead and just enroll themselves uh, before becoming a member. And at that point, we'll save that to the cart. So let's look at the cart now. So we've got $299 is our total. We've got $250 for the art appreciation and $49 for financial success. And at this point, they're like, well, wait a minute, I've got this flyer that says I'm supposed to save all this money when I'm a member. And so they go and add the actual membership to their cart. Prior to this update, it would not retroactively apply that discount if they added it to their cart after the other courses existed. So what this is basically doing, let's go ahead and enroll myself. Now this does have a $350 member fee and there's not gonna be any discount on that. But what it should do is adjust the amounts of the other courses. So it went from 250 to 215 and 49 to 35 on those and automatically recalculated that cart total. So this is just another way that we can make things as seamless and foolproof as possible for your end users so that it reduces the amount of calls that you get saying, hey, wait a minute, I was supposed to get this discount, but I didn't. Okay, next is for any of you uh, that are I was using- just gonna mention that okay. it always, or you know, going back quite a ways, would work okay if you put the membership course on first, then you know, the subsequent courses you added, you'd get the membership fee. But uh, right. uh, no, we realize that not everybody always does things in the absolute proper order. So this way it's a little more forgiving. Correct. Okay, so next up is um, to do with escrow on AceWeb. So if any of you are using that feature that was released in build 60, um, it now respects the option on the green and student manager. So if we just go into any course on the AceWeb info tab, the option down here that says don't allow escrow to be used on AceWeb. What this is, it nullifies the ability for any escrow to be used in that cart instance. So kind of the caveat at this point is we, we can't have it do two separate totals on a cart, um, one with escrow and one with something else. And so if you have a course that is flagged for don't use escrow, it's basically going to give you a message that says you have an escrow balance, but because you have this course on your cart, uh, you're not able to apply it at this time. Either remove the remove the course or do a separate transaction. So um, just so you are aware, if you are using escrow, that feature is now available for course by course basis. All right, next up, Cheryl has been back in action and busy doing some really cool stuff. One of which is a new contact us form. So what this does is gives the ability for you to have a page where, um, you know, similar to a lot of different sites that you would go to. It's basically a form that is going to send whatever information that it collects, the name, email, phone number, and then whatever their question is to whoever's listed in that notify office field. So whoever's getting your notice, office notifications would get this when they, um, when they submit this form. It does support the reCAPTCHA, so um, I would definitely recommend that. If you have not done that on your other templates and you've been getting spam accounts or anything like that, we released that a few builds ago. And for pages where there's basically just a, an open form that you can submit that doesn't require an actual logon, such as this contact us, or I believe like the send a friend or suggest course, those are the ones that get hit the most often with bots. And so the best way to prevent those is with this new recapture feature. Um, but props to Cheryl for, for making this awesome new contact us form. And also props from Cheryl is this new styling for 
the logon page. So kind of a little refresh. Um, it's a, a bit more modern and comes with the ability for you to click to see what your entered password is. I'm obviously not going to click that, but uh, if you want to have this new styling, this is something that we can't really just apply in an AceWeb update because it's going to take changes to your style sheet. So if you do want to use this, get with your tech and um, we'll be able to give you the changes to make to those style sheets that will allow you to use this new logon form. Um, next up, I wanted to kind of just recover the, the new proxy dialog options. So if you missed the last webinar update, um, in 60, we greatly enhanced the ability to, oh, my uh, desktop is gone, so let's try this. We enhanced the experience for your users using proxy registration to make it uh, less confusing in the different configuration setups that you might have for your uh, for your email system. So what it's doing is it's giving you different customizable text based on what your, uh, your um, oh, I can't even think of the setting, user ID source, if it contains MOLT, which is allowing you to have duplicate email addresses on your name records, it allows you to customize the message that pops up for the different scenarios. So in the first example, if you're logged in as you and you, you click the enroll someone else and you enter your own email address and your account is the only account in the system that has that email address, then it's going to present you with the text that says, um, here's the options. If you want to use this email address, we do allow you to have another account with the same email. Um, so just close this message and fill out the information and continue on. However, it's got the, the sort of fail safe that says maybe you didn't mean to click enroll someone else and you actually just wanted to enroll yourself and that's why you're any, entering your own email. And if that's the case, click here and it will restart that registration process as uh, your, your own account instead of in someone else. The next option is basically the same thing, except this is what will be displayed if there is one other account that has your own email address. It's saying, okay, again, we do allow you to have uh, duplicate email addresses on accounts. So if the person that's showing here in this example, you know, Cheryl is the one doing the registration and there's another account for Terry Scott, it's basically saying, did you mean to register Terry? If so, then, uh, close this and click confirm and continue. However, if you want to create a new account, then you can um, click the create a new account and enroll them in the course. Alternatively, the same fail safe if you actually meant to enroll yourself, click here and it will start that singular registration process. The third option, again, pretty much the same, except that this is when you have multiple email addresses with the I'm sorry, multiple accounts with the same email address. So this is kind of getting into the, the contract training, workforce development. If you've got registrars that end up doing all the registration for particular organizations and things, they're going to be the ones that have this proxy registration history where they've created a bunch of accounts that actually use their own email address. Um, so this, again, that's just giving you the warning saying, if you want to add another record using your email address, close this, click the new name record button, Otherwise, if you want to use one of these existing accounts, close this, click on them. And um, as always, if you actually meant to enroll yourself, click the link. And then the fourth and final customized text option is in the case where you do not allow duplicate email addresses on your name records. It's basically going to say, did you mean to enroll yourself in the course? Um, if not, then we're sorry, but you're going to have to close this and pick a different email address because you can't have duplicate accounts that use that same email. So just kind of a refresher on that. And uh, we think that it is, has definitely helped some people and they're confused patrons. So uh, definitely check that out when you get a chance. Okay, next up, we have expanded the ability to use catalog table fields on the show schedule. So if you're not familiar, let's go with this one here, show, so show schedule is the routine that's used to display your big listings of courses. Um, 
it coincides with the schedule fields ACE Web INI setting, which is what allows you to customize and configure the columns that show up or the fields that show up. Um, so what I'm going to do is bring that INI setting up here. And you can see it's right at the top here because we've been making some changes to that. If we click into this, you can see this is where we're configuring those columns that show up on our show schedule. So the, the new feature with this is that it allows fields from the catalog table. Uh, obviously, the catalog table is what houses your course description, the information about that, um, that iteration of that course that's running. So if you've got materials or prerequisites, things like that, that you want to list in that show schedule lookup, you can now add those. It does require having a an additional um, bit of code in your X show schedule, I believe. Yeah, X show schedule that HTM template. Uh, if the update and you are following the instructions and replacing all the files that we include with that, then that new template will already have this on there. However, if you're wanting to just apply your own customizations, then um, we'll include that in the documentation on what you need to put in there. But as an example, let's do something crazy like just put in the course description. So right here, you can see we're following the format of the field, followed by a colon, followed by whatever text description you want for the course. We're going to save that. We're going to come back here and we're going to refresh. And there we go. So now we've got our course description as one of the columns of our show schedule listing. So uh, sky's the limit. Anything in the catalog table that you want to include there is now fair game. OK, next up, uh, we wanted to mention that the the cancel registration feature, so the ability for registrants to cancel registrations on AceWeb has been updated a little bit. Um, it now functions on the SQL version of AceWeb, as well as the ability to uh, cancel out of waitlisted registrations. So if you've got a student that um, wants to, and again, we're talking about free registrations at this point, so no money involved, uh, but they can actually go in and cancel themselves out of those particular classes, including waitlisted registrations. Next up is the group break option. So this is uh, something that has been around for a bit. And what the new feature is, is that it eliminates the, the automatic dedupe of, so when you are using this particular option, it would only show one iteration of each course even if that course was in one or more groups. So for instance, um, let's see. So we've got beginning crochet under the BOGO group, and we've also got beginning crochet under crafts. Prior to this, the, the dedupe um, would take over and it would say, okay, we're only gonna have one of these, and so it would put it, I believe, whatever the first group that came about was. Um, so if you're going to use this type of a layout, and again, if you like this accordion style layout, so you're displaying basically all your courses, but in a group breakout option, then get with your Aceware Tech and we can get you the means to be able to apply those styles and make those changes. The last thing um, I want to mention, actually, Sharon, do you want to talk any about the My School Bucks? Uh, a new payment gateway that we've added support for? I will, just like Jason said, I'll add that we have just recently partnered with a new payment service provider, My School Bucks, which does work with a lot of K through 12 um, public school programs that may have adult ed programs with that. And do watch for your newsletter. We are working on kind of um, some information little more information for you, but you can also see on our website from the partner page that My School Bucks is up and links directly to their product, and so you can take a look at that if you think that might be something that could be beneficial for your program. But I am working with My School Bucks to get some more detailed information ready for our newsletter, so do watch for that. Awesome. Okay, last couple of things I want to mention. Uh, this update is going to have 
a number of new files and templates that have to be replaced. Uh, this also includes a new Web Connect framework. So the, the, the foundation framework that AceWeb runs on, it's got some new DLLs that we put in, and one of these is going to change the actual table structure of your AceWeb request log. So there's gonna be some special instructions with this update. Um, if those aren't followed, then it, nothing is going to work. Literally the first link that you click is gonna spawn an error. So make sure that you read the instructions that I recommend that you work with your tech when you're gonna do this update, because again, there are gonna be some templates that need to be replaced. You're gonna to wanna to check those against your existing ones to see if you've got any customizations. If so, make sure you apply your customizations to the new versions of these templates. And uh, as always, back up, back up, back up. Can't say it more. If you are not subscribed to our Aceware forums and you wanna get notifications about either the student manager or the AceWeb updates, please visit our forums. You can get to the site from our main website, aceware.com, and you basically just click on either the student manager or the AceWeb updates forum. You'll need to sign up for an account, but then down at the bottom, you'll click the, uh, it'll say subscribe forum here. Click that link, and then that will allow you to get email notifications as soon as we post any of these new builds. So if you're desperately waiting for when 61 is going to come out and you want to know right at that minute, then go ahead and subscribe to that forum and you'll get that email notification. Stein, Cheryl, anything that uh, I missed that you guys want to add or any questions that popped up? Um, I guess I could just mention that the uh, instructor profile form is now fully functional. I think the previous build we released this <clears throat> a screenshot, but the uh, didn't have a working version, but that is with 61, that will be, uh, you'll need an extra template. And again, talk to your te techs about that, but <clears throat> with, uh, we do have the way for your, to allow your instructors to come in and edit their own uh, information profiles. Cheryl, do we have a an active- That's, that's um, not on the, it's that's not on not the demo, on the demo okay. yet. Yeah, not yet. It won't be until we I, we get 61 on the demo. So, speaking of 61, you do have a question, uh, folks, on this update. If it's a full update or an incremental update, um, there are always going to be incremental updates at this point. So, um, it, you'll you'll have the option of doing the incremental update if you're already on build 60. If you're on anything prior to 60, then you'll want to do the full update. But while whether, while it's, while whether it's full or incremental, you still need to worry about those framework changes because yes. uh, that's going to impact any any time you hit 61. You'll need to go through those special hoops. So we're getting close to that hour here. But uh, Jason, a question from Brittany about. Uh, uh, what all needs to be done? Can you give us a 30-second elevator on allowing the self-canceling option in AceWeb? I suggested getting with the tech, but can you give a quick verbal overview um, on enabling so, uh, self-canceling yeah. now? Let's see. I believe we've got that. So if we were to just log into staff web access and go look up a and we would go so with staff web access you'll also have this ability to uh, do the cancel pre or waitlisted registrations from here but if we view registration history option and go to oh, i pick someone that doesn't have any <laughs> free courses but essentially there's going to be the option uh, on that current courses page that would have a checkbox here that says cancel out of this free registration. Um, and that's that's really it in a nutshell. As far as the uh, templates, it's going to be the ones that included included in the AceWeb update zip are going to be the ones that you need in order for that to, to work properly. So no extra so templates required. Is there an INI that turns that ability to display at the student level, not at the staff level? Uh, to be able to, to allow a student to self-cancel? 
or is that just by taking it off of the page? This is at the from the student history mode. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it'll it'll be on Stein. there. It It'll will be on, be on there, there if for courses. a zero, yeah. if you have a zero fee course. So by default, it is available for a zero fee course if you yeah. have the current set of templates. All right, then yeah. we're good on that, Jason. We're running over time, so I think uh, got you. Uh, we're good on That's that. So all I've Sharon, done. So. okay. I'm just going to remind folks. Hopefully, you're seeing my screen there that our user webinar this month is all about billing and invoicing and reporting. So be sure to sign up for that and tell those that deal with these finances to sign up. And you are the first to hear that the dates for our virtual conference in 2021 um, have been selected by you. And so circle those dates and get them held on your calendars. More information to follow. So that's a, a quick summary there. And with that, we can let folks get back to their day, and we had a few questions that we'll follow up with individually. And have a good day. Have a good weekend. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to our development team for all their work. We really appreciate it. Bye, everyone.